Let's have it, kid. <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk about three things today. First of all, I'm going to finish. Oh, no, actually, we have here two uh, things behind what defines morality. One of them is society, and secondly, is inherent values. I'm going to talk about both of them in my first two clashes. The third clash will be do people know what's good for themselves? Before that, a really quick rebuttal. First of all, the example about uh, society killing people, well, obviously, according to self speech, we believe that's completely immoral and we're morally against that. I think that was clear. Secondly, you asked for the magic source. How do you define what's moral? I think you hear that in both sides of the proposition. That we define by what's moral by two criteria in the descending order. First of all, basic human dignity. Beyond that, what the majority decides in the country. Oh. Thirdly, this whole, no thank you, this whole gay right example. So we have two things to say. We do believe that gays should deserve some basic human dignity, just like everything else. But besides that, we accept the fact that it's, there are different morals in different countries. And that's why we think it's fine that in some countries it will be morally for gays to get married, and in some countries it will not. Why is this important? Why do you think that the country can decide if, gay, if it's morally correct that gays can get married? And I've got this down to earth. Why is that? Because if each minority decides for itself, like you want, if each individual decides for itself, like you want, we have no society. We have anarchy. Oh, yeah, when each yeah. one decides for himself what's his moral law, then we have no functioning society whatsoever. And we obviously so, right. want to avoid that. And that's why we say, besides the exceptions, besides the extreme cases, our laws are uh, also our moral values, and vice versa. So, right. uh, of course, there are exceptions which you can give us, but in most cases. Now, in my constructive speech, I will not try, as the first position, to show that in all cases this defines morality, and I will not uh, try, as the first position, to show that in no, no case can this be moral or the other way around. We will show that in most cases, the moral thing to do is not to be based on consent, but to be based on society's basic values and human dignity's basic values. Um, we are not going to take this debate to an extreme on either side. Um, we definitely agree with all that's been said by the first government, and I will show that in my speech, just to be clear on that. Um, I am also going to try to bring this debate down to with as many examples as possible. Let's begin with society, and no, and begin with first off. What first off actually told us is that we have consent by proximity. And whatever society decides is fine because I consented to being in this society. First of all, we never consented. We were born in that society. There was never any consent. But secondly, and most importantly, this debate, the clash in this debate is who decides, me or the society. Once you say that the society should decide, you are on our side. You can agree with everything that Mila and Sarah said already. Once you say that society's values are the correct values, then we are in agreement, but in our side and in agreement. And now, what did Mila explain? Mila explained that when I decide an action, I don't only decide for myself, it has external externalities. It affects others. And I think the best ex uh, example is prostitution. Every time we hear about laws against prostitution, someone says, no, no, but I read this blog about a prostitute who really enjoys her work. And since she really enjoys her work, let's let prostitutions do, uh, continue uh, in this occupation. But obviously, the vast majority of cases, uh, prostitutions are being abused or taken advantage of. And we want to prevent that. In mo the most, so even if there are five people who do consent, once we let them consent, there will be 50 people who will have th be, this will be done to without their consent. And we definitely want to avoid that. And this is exactly how this affects society. Your decision, you live in part of society, not only affects yourself, but affects others. And that's why this is important. Before I continue, I will take second half. Right. So you told us the second criteria for where morality comes from is what the majority decides. Isn't that the majority of individuals consented? Yes. Thank you. No, it's not. It's a majority. It's like each and every one of them. If the majority decides, I'm going to take you hard examples, that marijuana is illegal, that if anyone in this room smokes marijuana, that's not morally, in my opinion, even if he agreed to it. Or if the majority decides that we should not have pedophily and the kid agrees or consents, then it's not immoral. If the majority decides oh. against, if the majority oh. decides, I don't Thank you. If the majority decides against prostitution, then even if there's some in the, major in, in the society that is a prostitute and, cons and consist concedes to that, that's still immoral in our opinion. Oh, yeah. The fact that there is a majority doesn't mean that each and every individual decided. Let's continue. Now let's talk about basic inherent moral values. And uh, first, Pop said that there are basic objective values, and Sarah stated these uh, specifically. It's life and it's basic human dignity. Now, why are these so important? Because we think that we've Without basic human dignity, you lose your ability to consent later on. There is no meaning to your life in this society. Obviously, without life, there's no life. But beyond that, without human dignity, <laughs> nice. Without, <laughs> human dignity, without being able to, to be respected as a person, without being once you, you're seen as an animal or as a plant, then there is no meaning to you being in this society. Now, why is this important? Because we believe that most people, not in 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 in, in, in um, uh, let's say. 
an objective situation in the field of ignorance, if you will, would want society to protect them, if you will. Would want society to protect them, would want society to prevent them from taking their own lives. And I'm going to answer your question now regarding this nice people going to Switzerland. We believe that in the vast majority of cases, people committing suicide need help. In the vast majority of cases, these are people that have been abandoned by society and now need solidarity back, now need society to help them. You might find that the very extreme case, cases are people who made the fully rational decision and know exactly what's going to happen, but those are the mi minority. In most cases, these people do not know what they are thinking. In most cases, and that's why most societies try to stop them. And in most cases, these people will later on thank society and tell them, thank you for stopping myself. I needed you in that moment. And this brings me directly to my third point about knowing the implications. Now, what we've heard from uh, that sometimes people don't know what will happen. Let's give a few examples. If a salesperson comes to your house and convinces you very smoothly to sell your house for $10,000 and you agree, we'll still think that's an immoral action by that salesperson. Just because he's smooth doesn't make the fact that you, you lost all your possession morally correct. Uh, when a country enforces people to have pension systems, even if without their consent, we think that's moral because they will need it later on in life. It will help them later on. And I'm going to add something new. It's not only that you don't know the implications, you're often irrational. And the best example is addictions. When uh, an, an, an narcotic just needs his next hit and will do anything, including selling an organ to get it, we don't think it's immoral, it's moral to, to, to make him sell that organ. Obviously, and I think we will all agree to that. Now, why are these so important? Because this shows that many decisions are always, or in mo the, the vast majority of cases, taken with, with, with um, a situation that you later regret, that do not, that not promote your self-interest. And why in the up, often and self spend these are irreversible decisions. And since they're irreversible, we need to decide. We need to decide if we're going with letting the person decide or deciding society. And how do we decide? We let society decide because we believe the vast majority, by the law of large number, that the vast majority knows best often what's good for you as well. And that's why we let the vast majority of cases decide that it's good for you not to be a prostitute and it's good for society as a whole. And now Feldman said something about denying will and that's well, we always, we always deny will when it's rich people, that when there's no consent, we always deny someone's will to do. When someone tries to hit someone, we deny his will to hit someone because it hurts the other person, just like in this case, it hurts the person himself.